We've been to the Scrivener's dormitory. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Unless we discover a new location, the major locations, it's just now the, the Hall of Revealed Mysteries, which I'm curious about. I keep being, we keep, we just found out that they lost a, a holy relic or they lost a relic. <laughs> Someone actually stole something from the hall? How'd they manage to do that? Whale only knows. Grimda's looking for someone to blame, though, so stay stay clear of her for a few days. I'll raise you one better. I'll maybe solve your problem or not. <laughs> you never know. It, the outcome's crazy. I'd wager there are more than a few banned books in here. Uh, some named oh Yanni Hauk. I can't read the person's name. Hauka. The books on these shelves cover the blip. History yeah. and mythology of Aldvalia. Maybe I'll finally find the books I've wanted to find. Ah, it's all stealing, damn it. How do you do? Bexa. The woman barely glances up from the tomes at the table you as you approach. You're welcome to browse the stacks, but mind that you keep your voice down. This is still a temple, after all, and Grimda doesn't tolerate disorder. Tell me about yourself. She throws her broad shoulders back. I am a scrivener, and a devotee of Whale. It's my duty to look after our records and resources. Her chest swells with pride. This is a temple. Looks like a library. Her eyes grow wide and around. That's because it is. Whale is the god of mysteries and answers. Encryption and decryption, concealment and revelation. She raises her hands to the rows of shelves. Its guidance comes from the understanding of the unknown and the, projection, the protection of hidden knowledge. The Hall of Revealed Mysteries was built to celebrate that. You think there's such a place in the Deerwood? Incredible. I'd love a glimpse of the archives. How many secrets must sit upon these shelves? That didn't really answer my question. She sighs and rolls her eyes. Yes, it's a library of sorts. Temples dedicated to Whale tend to hold vast stores of knowledge. We use that knowledge to unravel and preserve the mysteries of the world. Who's Grimda? Bexa speaks reverently. Why, she's the High Archivist. She's one of the most accomplished scholars alive today. Nothing goes on here without her knowing about it. Almost nothing, anyway. She scratches behind her ear. You should probably tread lightly around her today. Farewell. So browse as we want through the stacks, except we can't take anything because it counts as stealing. Records of books borrowed and returned fill the cubby holes. Click on it, please. The symbols of these pages writhe and shift. They're dizzying to look at. These titles all refer to Glanfoth and mathematics and advanced geometry. We need more reasonable people on Divine's Bay. Everyone always wants more reasonable people. Someone's been reshelving them properly. When Fexa finds out... Everyone always wants more, re wants more reasonable people. Fortunately, people saying that are equally unreasonable and just want people that think the same way as them all the time. Like when people talk about, like, it's time to go back to common sense. And, their, and common sense is mostly their incredibly specific stance on everything. <laughs> No entry into the archives without Grimda's permission. I'm guessing that's the archives. Can I go in here? Hey, you didn't stop me. I'm here. I'll take a look. So naughty. Okay, I've definitely seen daily affirmations before. Dance War Part 1. 
think I have seen that one before too. Yep. I want to collect books. <laughs> I like books. All right. Gonna have to talk to Grim Duff. We want to get to the archives, which... Uh, not necessarily a priority. I was thinking, oh, Eddar wants uh, to get to an archive, but this isn't the right archive. He wants to go to the one at the first fires. Keep searching. The obscure, uh, the obscured leaves clues for those who seek. Hail and well met. An elderly dwarf surveys the stacks. Her skin looks as tough and wrinkled as a walnut. Despite her stature, she manages to look down her nose at you. How does that even work? Wait, we're we're like the same height, so it, I, it totally works. But otherwise, I'm like, how do you look down a nose? That's a is she tilting her head back like a lunatic normally? You're welcome to look around, but let the priests and scribes continue their search. She shoots the nearest robed figure with a withered, withered, withering glare. Wouldn't do to give them any other excuses. What are you looking for? Maybe I could find it. She sizes you up, stroking her chin. And I could trust you to bring it back, I suppose. She scowls at the robed priest again. You certainly couldn't do worse than this lot anyway. Thieves made off with an ancient scroll of whale. They intended to blaspheme by selling that which should remain hidden, a secret of the Hundred Visions. Her wiry eyebrows arch over her spectacles. The guards caught one of them, but were overzealous in their interrogation. All they could piece together was something about a farmhouse and the road to Deerford. Track the thieves down. I don't care what you do with them, but bring back the scroll. Whale well, rewards the persistent seeker, and so do I. The ancient scroll of Whale. There's a fine prize. I mean, a worthy task. What else do you need? I had questions about the missing scroll. Ask. Uh, you could notice something if you have good perception. Hey, Sagani, you see anything? Oh, she doesn't have a good perception. Even though you would expect a ranger to, but she doesn't in this case, because the stats work a bit different. Tell me what you know about the thieves. Very little. Except they were foolish to believe that they could steal from the God of Secrets. That and they were fleeing to a farmhouse. How should I handle the thieves? However you can kill them, rob them, leave them. It makes no difference to me. She waves a hand and smiles grimly. I'll consider it one of Whale's mysteries. What's so special about this scroll? Whale is the god of secrets. If I told you that, it'd, I'd cheapen it, wouldn't I? She cackles. It's a parable, the kind that nourishes the inquisitive mind and poisons the foolish. Tell me about yourself. I am the High Archivist of the Hall of Revealed Mysteries. She coughs loudly into her fist. And I'm too old and too busy to be bothered with inane questions. Even just one or two. Kana sighs. Like to know more about Whale. Her smile reveals a row of crooked teeth. That's the rub, isn't it? Whale is the god of things hidden and revealed. The more of the hundred visions one sees, the more one has yet to discover. Though we often call Whale he who sees and is not seen, it is neither male nor female. To assign any definitive characteristic to Whale is to miss another essential part of its divinity. The Hundred Visions A term of reference for Whale's many revelations. Despite the name, they're infinite. Each epiphany leads to yet another enigma. I thought I was busy. Neat. That sounds like a fun religion. Or investigation, or whatever you want to call it. And possibly this painted eye seems to move whenever you turn your back. Spooky. Spooky, spooky, spooky. Oh, he's standing right there. I'll take a look. Yeah. They seem strategically placed. I don't think I'm going to get any more books out of this. I'll take a look. Yeah. 
But books. I'll take a look. Hmm. I'm here. Unfortunately, I think I already read Ten Years of Dawn. Yep. Because it's already in there. And a deer customs also sounds familiar. Yep. Duplicates only. Well, we gave it a good try. Tattered journal. Did I just get this a moment ago? Trying to get back to before Grimda. Hmm. Let's double check what it says, I guess. That's the final journal of Jonas, that's probably it. But doesn't th this other one sound like it's the same... ...thing with an artifact? fellow who had it said it was uh, pretty nothing, so far as he's concerned. He's not willing to go digging in some ruins. But he was right about this gem leading to a hidden treasure. And that's worth sneaking past a few painted elves. No. I think that was like at the beginning of the game. I think so. Oh yeah, because it was a quest item being here. With all the keys. The Final Journal of Jonas. Okay. I don't think these are relevant. No. So I'll get to them when I get to them. Clink. And a new black color. So you get it. Congratulations, now you're a book holder. Because there's a new color of books. Is my logic. Even though there's, we're already splitting the brown ones. So none of this really makes any sense anyway. Here, you get the blue ones. And you get the gray ones, and you get the black ones, which are arguably the same thing anyway. It's fine. I really only started splitting the browns in the first place because he had so many books for, anyway, because of who he is. Not really relevant. Anyway. Those aren't- those aren't plot books. Well, they are- they're lore books or whatever. You know, the usual pattern. This elder of yours, he may have returned a drunk or an invalid. Maybe, but the search for Persok is just as important as what I find. Is that right? And what if you return empty-handed, huh? I never return empty-handed. Hmm. Durrance isn't making friends. <laughs> ah, it's listed as a task. Retrieve the stolen scroll. Grim just said that one of the thieves mentioned an abandoned farm on a path to Deerford. Deerford Village. Hmm. Well, guess we gotta go look for a farm. Decent enough excuse to break up our very long stint of that's already several episodes deep of us navigating this town and not even finishing one of its regions. Sure, let's head towards Deerford Village for the purposes of at least finding this. And we'll come back to town a few episodes later to continue our very very long trek through it. This is totally the type of thing where as I navigate though, I'll totally find other stuff. It's gonna be quite the adventure.
They wanted me to go to Anslog's Compass for the other storyline. Where I'd potentially get my gun. Long trip, though. Uh, yeah. Only just occurred to me, right, I should try this north door. Yeah. I bet the north gate will take me to the north bridge. And maybe I can figure out why it isn't accessible, or I could find out that it is accessible, or whatever. Or I won't be able to do shit. What's wrong with the mod mirror bridge? Takes so long to get around. Uh, I know that in-game time doesn't necessarily matter that much, but it's just a bummer to think about spending like four days in in-game going to and from Anslog's Compass just because I'm curious about what I'll find when I get there and stuff. Did I already go to the wooded? Yeah, I have, so I can just go straight to Searing Gorge. Which, if we're lucky, is also probably maybe where our other character wants to go. Uh, Sagani. A cliff over water was our clue. And that's a big cliff. According to the map, at least. Seems like it might be a good candidate. Let's start by following the path. I so rarely do, but it's where you'll probably find the most important plot points as you navigate an area. Then I can scrape back and forth like a lunatic trying to find every piece of map. Huh. Peculiar. Maybe even worrying. Surprisingly chill overall, all we found was a corpse. But no corpse makers. Now we run around like a lunatic. Until the map says that it's turned red. Elder Lion. Get it. Oh. That's a... Uh, okay. A Delum gun is coming by. And a whole lot of lions. That pack ended up being bigger than expected. Alright, well, the fight is beginning. Daze them. Daze them all. Let's see how this starts off. Okay, that might be a little dangerous. Or that spell that hit Delamgan. Seems dangerous. Or was spent sent was sent over by Delamgan. Cast cast your dazing spell. There we go. Let's see what we can do about DR here. Oh, you're where the hell back there? Things are not looking good. Oh god, it's because so many of them are focused on you, huh? Please knock him on his ass. Yeah, it's because the the Elder Line in particular is focused on Eskier. Who's in the middle of trying to cast a recover health spell. Hopefully that'll go off in a moment. Ooh boy. Crucible of the Soul. So did the heal already go off and that's all we got? That's not great. Okay. Let's just go for a bit of a heal.
Eh, it's useless for everybody else, though. Might as well cast the one that'll... This one both heals more and will safeguard other people against potentially dying a bit later. Let's see. Whoever is focused on you, I need them to go prone just to reduce incoming damage on Yaskier. Currently, nobody's on him. Oh. Character death. I thought there was no red lines, which meant nobody was engaged with him. Did I... Was that just a... Disengage? I'm not entirely sure if that was disengage or not. Ah, oh, well. I was hoping to get him away, so that he would hopefully stop taking so much hits. Because that was a... Ooh. Okay. Do what we can. That cast won't serve its same purpose anymore, so let's switch to the other one. Uh, one more chance. There we go. Now we can really muddy the water. And fill it up with so many attackers. But they won't know what to do with it. Tank staying up, at least. You know, this is acceptably messy. Let's maybe engage with a big, heavy, scary spell. Oh, boy. Low endurance, Aloth. Yeah, that's not what we want. Not what we want to have happen. <laughs> oh, that's Durance. Well, here I am clicking on the wrong character again. I meant to move him away and then do second win because I saw that he had it, and then I realized, oh, that's not even the right character. That Elder Lion's healing more than I would hope. And Aloth is going to die. Okay. Right, my deflection spell that I should have already cast. <laughs> oh. That's a lot of effects ha happening at once. Are any of them the one I want? Uh, I think he already cast... I think he already got auto-healed. Elder Lion is focused right now. Please come fight me. And it has gone. Okay. Bit of a chaotic fight. In a bit of trouble, just in general. Those worms are not going to last very long, so we need to focus this guy down before it gets worse. There we go. Alright, everybody. Uh, I'm not entirely sure which one's the best one to focus on right now. It's a faux AoE. Not the worst time to do something like that. Edo's holding strong, at least. And we can summon more dragons. Worms. Spelled with a U, strangely. There we go. Where's the Delamugum again? Is he still in here? Or did he die? I think he's still in here. Where... Delamugum, where is you? There we go. Click him. Click him to death. Make him very dead, please. Thank you.
Oh, immune. You can't do those kinds of tricks on them. You can knock them on our ass, though, so that's good. Yes, maximize fire damage while they're prone. Yay! Okay. This Elder Lion needs to go down. Immediately. Being able to summon three ranged targets to just go at it. Not bad. Not a bad option to have. Alright, well that hurt. Time to immediately rest. Three of the party members out of seven went down. Please loot the bodies. There we go. Awakened wood. There are jokes to be made about the awakened wood. Uh, should we persist a little longer? I don't know. Three, three people are at half health. That health don't come back. Yeah. Wilders and beasts. Oh my. Hope you all had a relaxing rest in the wind, and the rain, and the cold, and the night. You say what you want about them fantasy medieval types, but they get their night's rest. They sleep the full eight hours. Can you say the same? <laughs> push my character a little further back just because he's getting in the front a little too often perhaps a feral druid they've gone feral oh that's a lot of druids oh a feral druid oh a bear and a deer gotcha anyway let's focus this one down shall we and hope for the best. Mm-hmm. This thing isn't doing weapons are somewhat ineffective. What just happened? They cast Tanglefoot. Yeah. All right, well, now that we're grouped up, uh, let's uh, go ahead and uh, defend the entire group with one AoE, hopefully. They're not quite grouped up le yet. Let's start the... What? Yeah. I don't know, I was confused because it gave me like an AoE for the cast, and I wasn't sure what that meant. So I'll focus that guy. His, I think his... His buff's big enough to affect the entire party right now, which is not bad. Tip the scale for the entire party. Okay. Right now he's throwing around his new crazy balls. They're not grouping up the way I want them to for this uh, blinding spell. I can't get two or more of them at a time. And this is also not a very big spell. Hmm. I can kind of work with that. Once he's done being stunned, that's what that means. He's currently stunned. Not that not that he's casting a lightning spell. Why did it pause? Oh, Sagani's weapon. 
She still she did ten damage with three hits apparently. She crit for ten damage, but I guess it's also ineffective somehow. I mean, ten's not an amazing crit. I gotta gotta wait for that third tier of the cast. Throwing out them buffs left and right. Oh, they, they stopped shape-shifting as a stag. Somebody wants to cast a spell. I don't want you to cast a spell, so please, uh... Oh no, they stopped casting stag because they died. Well, knock this guy on his ass anyway. Stop all this casting. Don't, don't need this nonsense. Okay. How much can I hit in this spell? Less than I would hope. Still a giant ass bear in my face. And if I try to cast it on the bear, somehow he's not in range. Uh, hope for the best here. Does Aloth currently have. I'm throwing random elements around constantly going on. I just want to know if it went off or not. I can't tell. Is this weaponless as being the weird thing? No. Nope. I don't see dazzling crazy mega balls listed as a thing. Do you not actually cast it? Because it shouldn't be gone by now. It's only been... Definitely hasn't been a minute yet. Well, it's pretty late for it now. Time for a shocking development. <laughs> oh, right. He's no longer in bear mode, so that's neat. Had things... Ancient memory. Hold the edge. Found his voice. Ah. Yep. They're both paralyzed. You weren't hit at all. And you're barely injured. <laughs> okay. So this guy should hopefully go down before he finishes being paralyzed. Wait for one more chant before I do something else with him. Let's increase everyone's accuracy. That's always good. There we go. Y'all ready for some Durgans? Because I've got Durgans. Durgans killed the Feral Druid. That's nice. Hey Durgans, fuck them up. Are they all stunned already? Like the moment they came into existence? Holy crap. In your stunned. People just take turns being stunned a lot in this party right now. Downside of grouping them up, I suppose, but I also wanted to group up their, uh, their buffs. Maybe I should sp spread them out a little bit more now. Alright, so this guy's harassed, so he's not really screwing, he's not really screwing with us right now. Alright, a lot of people's weapons are ineffective right now. That'd be because he's a he's a he's an elk. I assume I assume it's like a defensive shape shift. He's down, and he's down. Well, now you're really screwed. Oh, you guys just straight up haven't found your new targets yet. Get them. I programmed you to get them. Yes. No movement from you. Dragons. 
Just in time to watch the fight not exist. There we go. Well, that was eventful. That wasn't very nice of them, but that was eventful. A fine battle axe. Cool. And a fine hunting bow. And ripple sponge. That's one of them drugs. One of the ones that has the uh, withdrawal symptoms. Yeah. Are those still lootable? Yep, yeah they are. Ooh, a golden oval. And more of the same. Alright, well, that went alright. Nobody got taken out this time, so they've got that going on for me at least. I can basically sprint around in, in full speed if I want to, because... Uh, if I see somebody, it pauses. Okay. Looking like a weird ruin now. Let's, uh, reveal it first, before I start pressing buttons or anything. Back to normal speed. <laughs> Oop, well, ah, where'd I go? There we go. There appears to be something here. They're more dryad-y creatures, yeah. The tree ladies. Oh, they're making weird noises. Shoot them, shoot them to death. <laughs> Oops, you didn't actually cast it yet, did you? Or did you? Shit. Uh, he just finished casting it. Cool. Alright. And one of them's- one of them's down already. We're probably fine. Earth- small earth blight. Did one of them summon that? Where'd that come from? Well, that's dead. <laughs> Don't have to worry about that anymore. Why is there a- I heard the sound of a paper turning to the quest update. I don't know. Everyone make sure you're focused on the same target, because then we get the best effectiveness out of all this. The chanting from my protagonist does kind of sound like it's just the Kana voice actor, doesn't it? Alright, everybody, click on that person. There we go. No, Pigra knocked out Utamak. Like, after- Literally after the fight was over. There must have- there must have been a poison effect or something. Well. Mm -hmm. That wasn't very nice. But we got through it. I just haven't been here yet. And I just went in a circle around this one spot. Psych, there's 500 druids standing right there on the head of a pin. Well, there's a nice little split in the center of this map. Oh, hey. Who are you? They're obvious. With a portrait. Really reveals them as being a party member immediately, doesn't it? Chewing on a piece of uncooked meat, a small Orlin dressed in tattered leathers offers a mumbled greeting and waves his hand. Despite his pleasant smile, the upper right portion of his face is in a, star a sorry state. An eye patch stitched with a stylized eyeball wraps around his head, and his ear is a mangled remnant that twitches and spasms while the other ear perks up at your approach. Next to him is the splayed carcass of a deer that appears ripped open by a bear or wolf. 
You hear a gurgling rumble next to you. Sagani places her hand on her stomach. Her eyes are on the carcass. Still fresh. Itumuk's pink tongue lolls out of his mouth. If this is your deer, you need a new game warden. Name's Heravius. Hungry? I can't eat all this. First catch of the day, help yourself. What killed that deer? One ornery Stelgar. Though looking at the deer's insides, it had a malformed but delicious heart, and would have been dead within the year regardless. Galloway chose a fitting end for this fine animal. Pardon me, I shouldn't pray with my mouth full. What brings you here? Other than the delicious venison, new trees to document, new animals to sketch, new sights to be seen. I've learned as much as I can from the druids of my circle. I'd rather wander and learn than take root and stagnate. So if you're traveling to Deerwood and need another set of hands, I'd welcome the safety of a group. Why are you so eager to join me? I'm a stranger around these parts, and I've had enough of solo travel for the time being. But it was just an offer, friend. If you have no need of an experienced druid, so be it. Consider the offer accepted. Splendid! It'll be an honor to run with a pack for a change. Well, that went from zero to hundred. Hello, new party member abruptly in the party. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Hmm, 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 hmm. The problem is that my party feels so complete right now <laughs> that I, having to switch one of them for somebody else is rough. Once a character has been dismissed from the party, they will return to either the Black Hound Inn or Gilded Veiled or to your stronghold. If you've acquired it. Hmm. My offensive spellcaster. My healer, my healer, basically, my ranged DPS, who, frankly, has the least tricks and surprises up her sleeve of the party, but I'm p potentially here for her story mission right now, maybe? Mandatory tank that cannot be removed from the party, dear lord, no, no, no. Uh, duplicate of my character. So these are the two that I'd go to for, most likely, maybe. You're kind of a duplicate, but your buffs are nice, and your effects are good, and so on. Still, I guess a duplicate's the go-to person to remove if you want to, uh, introduce somebody new. And hey, he'll have a chance to check out... Safe travels. He'll have a chance to check out the, uh, odd newer or whatever. It carefully, hopefully. Available for hire. What? Oh, go away. Yeah. <laughs> I suppose this is the part where I spend an episode leveling up my druid. Yep. Because y'all are level 6, and he is level 1. And so he will get stomped on if I let anything else happen to him. Uh, well. Sure. Time to level, I suppose. And... Maybe edit the formation? Whoa, that screwed up everything. Oh, right, because everyone rearranges based on... Yeah. yeah. Need something? Every time you change their order there, it rearranges that, I think. Hmm? The issue is I need to find out what kind of character he is before I do anything with him. Because I... Don't really know how much of a back row caster or frontline melee character he might be. He's missing an ear and an eye. Hmm. As a druid, he could be my completely overboard survival character. But that only affects resting bonuses. Because I don't know if this stuff will affect dialogue choices. Uh, but Kana was my mechanics guy and now he's not in the party. 
Definitely don't need a lore character. I don't have. I don't, don't need a stealth character. Might need a stealth character. Yeah. I might need a stealth character just because of the fact that I might replace Sagani with him long term, perhaps. But he does have that nice bonus to survival from being a druid and stuff like that. And it'd be a shame to waste that, but I can go deep down into that. Like higher and higher multiplier versions of these abilities could be pretty good if I'm use if I use them right. They're kind of a weird grab bag of abilities though. I think I'll make him another stealth character. Since Sagani won't always be in the party. Okay, so the druid specific ones. Wild Strike Burn. The druid's knowledge of the forces of nature allows him or her to automatically inflict additional burn damage when spirit shifted. 30% damage as Corrode, Burn, Freeze, and Shock. But only so bonus damage, but only when you're in your transformed form. She might do a lot. Well, burn and shock are pretty common in the party. Having a crowed is like the poison effect that often you'd associate with kind of naturey characters, so maybe that one. Let's let's uh, let's exit. I want to review what abilities he has right now to get a better idea of what his character is. So we'll look at that for a bit. Charm Beast! Utilizes his or her in, uh, innate connection with the natural world to charm enemy animals in the area of effect. Okay. The area of effect, too. That would have helped a moment ago with that lion fight, wouldn't it? I found the most important thing in the area last. Hmm. Duration is 10 seconds, 1.6 meter radius, so it's about 3 meter across the circle. That could aff affect a decent number of targets, potentially. Making them my allies for a bit, which would really screw up the fight for the enemies. Dancing bolts. Summon a flurry of thin bolts of lightning, hitting enemies in the area of effect with shock damage. Ah, a foe-specific attack. You can cast three of these per day, this tier of spell. Nature's Mark causes enemies in the area to uh, area of effect to glow with pale green light, making them easier targets. Affected enemies suffer decreased deflection and reflex. That's fairy fire. Yeah. Yeah, that's a straight up fairy fire spell. Nature's Vigor. That's a lot of healing. Oh, slowly. Yeah. It's around the caster. 15% maximum endurance and then 53 endurance over 15 seconds. Draws on the invigorating power of nature, creating a mild regeneration effect and raising max endurance in party members. Sunbeam. Bunch of burn damage and blinding. That radius is pretty consistent. Calls down a shaft of intense sunlight, burning and potentially blinding those caught in the area of effect. Talons Reach Conjures a giant pair of razor-sharp talons, causing slash damage to all in the area of effect. Lots of AoE. A lot of foe-specific AoE too, which is great, because it means it doesn't hit your guys. Tanglefoot! Finally get to see what this is. Rapidly grows a patch of twisted vines that surround it and entangle anyone unlucky enough to get caught inside. Characters who set foot inside the area of effect become hobbled. Vile Thorns. Shoots sharp thorned vines up through the ground, causing pierce damage and potentially sickening anyone in the area of effect. All attributes go down by one. 
And a lot of damage, but it's also friendly fire, so it's dangerous. Winter Wind. Causes an icy wind of incredible power to arise, pushing back all in the area of effect and inflicting freeze damage. Ah, foe AoE. This another one that only hits your enemies. Powerful. So he has access to a number of elements. Lightning. Was this burning? Yeah. So lightning and burn and pierce and freeze. So a bunch of spells. Shape shift Stelgare. Combat only. What's a Stelgare? Let's review this thing I haven't looked at very much lately. Do I know, do I know what a stale gear is? I don't know what a stale gear is. And I can't shapeshift outside of combat. Huh. So it's a toggle. I can do it once per fight, but only for 20 seconds. Surprisingly, the shapeshift isn't a very big, long spell. And it's also not a toggle. You can't just stay in that form for as long as you want. So he's primarily a spellcaster. He can just kind of turn into a melee character for a little while when he gets attacked or something. Second wind is there. But he's primarily more of like a backline spellcaster. Maybe mid-range more. I'm constantly trying to get Durance in the middle. I, I could just default him to that. I don't know. My formations are mostly nonsense. <laughs> Alright. Oh, that's the entire level. Level 2 is... Just kind of nothing for a bunch of people, isn't it? Okay. Greater Wild Strike Corrode. Okay, so I permanently committed to that. The other Wild Strikes are now gone. But I can make this one stronger. I can make it to be... Looks like 45% damage as Corrode, which is a decent chunk. It's only when you're in Wild Strike, though, which is at most... 18 seconds per fight. Otherwise, we have a bonus first level spell. Hmm. Probably not in a hurry to go down anyone else's passives necessarily. Alright, I'll just review these again. It's mostly the same talent. Yeah, the talents should be all the same ones I've seen before. But I gotta make my mind up, because there's so many options. I'm not necessarily feeling any of these that strongly, so maybe just Greater Wild Strike Corrode. Yeah. Oh, that's that whole level. You just abruptly level up. Huh. Okay, this time I get something. You get level 5, all you get was uh, a few skill points. So, bonus first level or second level spells. I'm right back where I left off again. the skills are conditional, a lot of them are minor boosts to accuracy.
a melee line accuracy bonus is slightly tempting. I think I may want Apprentice's sneak attack. I think I'm gonna make him a third melee unit, not counting its muck. Maybe with a spear like he already has, or maybe with dual wielding or something. Some variation that we're not already doing right now. And so, sneaking around the group and kind of flanking or taking opportunistic strikes and stuff might actually work well with the party. I don't know, we can always reset these characters if we need to, if I really screw it up. Gonna have to armor him up, that's for sure. Oh boy. All he's got equipped right now is just some fine leather armor. Yeah, we're gonna have to go a little deeper than that. Like fucking plate? <laughs> At like the bare minimum? Let's see. Probably the... it might be the fine breastplate. Lose 2 DR, gain back 10% recovery speed. It's kind of manageable without fully committing, perhaps. Let's see, I've definitely got a better spear, right? He's got a fine spear. It is... it does come pre-fine. Yeah, I have, I have more fine spears. I don't have a bunch of other mind-blowing weapons right now. I take it he doesn't particularly specialize in a spear, though. He just kind of has one. Might want to give him these weapons that my other character is just kind of holding on to. Two fast weapons, dual wielding, just kind of smack away at him. DR bypass, DR bypass, bonus damage, life leech. I've switched to them precisely never. A fine wand. You can do you can dual a spear? I thought they were two-handed. I guess they're not, no. Look at the little stabby guy. What is this what is yeah. Stiletto and hearth harvest. That does even out my group of having all three configurations. A two-handed weapon user, a sword and shield user. And a dual wielder. We'll see if this is even remotely viable. It's uh, it's always an experiment, figuring these characters out. Or so I think. Conan took my books. <laughs> I can't read those books while he's gone. They're gone. Ta-da! An exceptional repeater. That might be the way to go. Give her a sword and shield setup if, if she is switching to melee mode. I don't know if I will though. I don't know if there's even a, a negative to melee range bow using necessarily. I'm not sure. In some games, you could just get away with it, and it's like there's nothing, nothing's even happening. And in other games, it's like devastating to try to use the bow at that range. So it's hard to say. And these are some out-of-date weapons. I can pretty confidently say I'm not using them at this point. So let's just move on from that. I've specialized in two-handed weapons at this point, and it's probably going to be how it stays. I guess he can keep a ranged weapon around if he wants to. Ooh, a rod. Gotta have a, don't I have a better rod by now? No. Two-handed. Wand. Two-handed. Yeah. If we have a fine wand, I should give that to somebody who 
uses wands actively. I don't remember how rods and wands are different. Pierce slash, pierce crush. Looks like rods do slightly, slightly more damage, but wands are fast. Like average versus fast. Probably a significant difference. I should probably prefer wands, honestly. Then there's a staff, but I don't think I want him at that range. I'd have to give him heavier armor if that was the case. We're already sorted by type, so I guess all I have is this wand. Let's give him that and enchant it. There we go. By now, everybody should have fine or exceptional or unique weapons just to even us out. I guess I get to feel better now about my lack of correctly uh, getting that gun for Kana because it's not even the party right now. At least for the moment. At least for the moment. Alright, well, I guess that's about all the time we have at the moment, so let's do some light reading. House Domino, the people I wiped out. <laughs> what can be said about a House Domino that isn't whispered fearfully in a back room over the dim light of a dying fire, in fear of the wrong set of ears will hear it? Wow, sounds like it was a good thing I wiped him out. <laughs> the Domino history is colorful and violent, exciting, and more than a little bloody. The Dominels were a small Adiran family that dealt almost exclusively in textiles. They made a modest living, slowly gaining a reputation for having high-quality product. This reputation earned them connections, business, social, sometimes marital, that solidified their position as the premier family of the region. If you wanted access to anyone, the Dominels were the way to do it. Soon, every city had a business that was owned, at least in part, by the Dominels. Their power and influence grew until many said the family had more power than even the fair coinic of, of, uh, of a deer. Fair coinic, fair coining. Hmm. It looks like a few German words, kind of. But with the power came the corruption. One cannot have that level of control and expected to keep it through strictly legal means. Soon, rumors were spreading of threats and extortion. Though it cannot be proven, the unofficial reports that the Dominels were responsible for the death of Trindish Birnwiger, which left his entire shipping empire in the hands of his wife, Udel Dominel Birnwiger. Ah, that name gives it away a bit. With their hold on the land practically secured, the Dominels no longer struck, uh, stuck to the shadows, brazenly eliminating opponents, manipulating deals, and threatening anyone who might cause them a problem. Because they were now dominate, because they now dominated the trade route, no one dared oppose them anymore for fear that their business would be strangled. Like most empires, though, not even theirs could last forever. The end came during the War of Defiance. Unlike most of the land, the Dominels threw in with a deer instead of Admet Herdret. After the defeat of the Empire, and the destruction wrought on the land during the war, not even the Dominels could rebuild what they had. And having history show them on the wrong side of the war, no one would touch the name. The domain that took years to build crumbled in mere months. Today the Dominels have once again built a name for themselves, proving they are capable and savvy business people. The rumors about the family still circulate, though. Word is, members of the family are striving to lift the family from its current obscurity and elevate it to the level of power it once had held. Well, took care of that. 